time. Let's actually, let's actually start. Allow your, your feet to connect in the center. Relax your shoulders, relax your tailbone. Bring your head top up to the highest point. Bring your hands together in the center. Take a deep breath and relax. We're gonna start with some breathing. So make this a stretch when you inflate, expanding all the way and using the arms like the mechanism of a bellows. So when you inflate, when you inhale, and then on the exhale, there's no effort. The handles for the bellows come downwards and close off the lungs. Inflating, just like opening, And then check while you're breathing, activate internally, lifting the pelvic floor, lifting at the bottom on the inhale, keeping the tongue connected to the upper palate. you finish, if you finish, return to Tai Chi Harmony. Allow the feet to connect. And then breathing. Reviewing Tai Chi Harmony. We want to move the body so that it's shifting from front to back, side to side. So, lifting the arms, we want to get away from the habit of raising the, the hands with the muscles. So, the first one is moving the whole body. And the next one is the breathing. As you inflate, <clears throat> bringing the chi upwards, and then also this increasing the pressure. So inflate, expand, <clears throat> moving the body. And the hands working just like something that's inactive you have a rope or a whip and you move it this way. The same way we want to have the, the movement become effortless so that we're not using power to raise the hands to the center. <clears throat> Just to about shoulder level. Allow the fingertips to touch. And then activate your feet turning around the center line. Feel your center. Relax your shoulders. Breathing deep, come back to the center. On your own, going 
at your own pace, breathing on your own. Stretch your whole body. Be sure to be aware of your hips and knees. Don't have pressure on your knees. So you can time this so that your inhale is complete when you're turned all the way. But you don't have to, if you like to turn slower and you like to feel the stretch, you can breathe on your own. And then uh, release your shoulders. And the same thing, you feel as if the, the movement, the stretch is starting about the middle of the back. And the same thing, extending up and around. Your shoulders may move this time. Breathing. Extend. Check to see that you have a relaxed expression. Corners of the, the mouth and the corners of the nostrils are activated and open. If you haven't changed directions, change working from around the center and extending the whole time, pushing up through the head top. Go back to the center. Do some shoulder rolls. So feel your shoulder turning. As if the movement is coming from the center, so that it's coming from here. <clears throat> so open all the ribs, open all the shoulders. And then again, you can coordinate the breathing, you don't have to, but expanding the breath. You can extend the stretch, change directions, go the other way. And the same thing, expanding so that the lungs increase the stress. And then alternate, pull one side up, pushing the other side down. Try to keep your center line straight. As if, if I'm facing forward, as if I'm turning my shoulder all the way under my, my chin, my nose, and then raising it up to the half circle. Breathe deep. change direction on these. And the same thing, feel your ribs, feel your sh shoulders, your collarbone, the shoulder blade, all that working. <clears throat> Next, we're going to do some hip circles, turning around the hips this way. So imagine your upper body and lower body is one single piece, and we want to keep your, keep your spine in line and try to keep your legs lined up. Remember, we said sometimes during the exercise, we may actually, we don't want to push the hip past this line, but as a stretch, when it's controlled, when we're doing it on purpose, that's, it's okay to find the extreme. We don't want to have that when we balance. Remember the long, deep breathing that we started with and change directions. <clears throat> when 
when you come back to the center, we're going to turn around the center just a little bit. A lot of times when we do this exercise, we do this kind of thing. But on this one, I want you to relax. I want you to just using the center. And by the way, make your feet parallel, right? Uh, my camera angle, you can see the, the way that the, the rug is going. So my feet are parallel. And here, I want you to focus on pulling your head top up and allowing everything else underneath it to turn. So relax your shoulders, relax your tailbone, pushing the head top, extending the head top up as if this is going up this way, and then everything else is sinking. Relax your back. Keep your chin tucked. And then pushing up while you turn. So imagine like when you turn a, a screwdriver, you're continuously driving either in one direction or if you're pulling it out, it's going the other way. So whether you think about uh, the counterclockwise going out this way to go up or pushing up clockwise from the interior, having the power go up through the center while we're just gently rocking around the middle. Relax your arms. So starting from the outside, your fingers, your hands, your wrists. Relax your forearms using the mouse keyboard. Relax your elbows. Relax your biceps. Collarbones, shoulder blades. Breathe deep. And then <clears throat> take a break for a second. How many of you when we're doing this you feel you feel this in the in your shoulders here, right? Uh, there's something else that we can do if we do this. If you <clears throat> take uh, for the Tai Chi alignment, when we practice Tai Chi harmony, we want the feet to be lined up and the hips to be lined up level and the shoulders as well. So we want to keep that same kind of alignment. And this next one that we do, it's important that we have the the stretching that the head top is pushed up and the tailbone is down. And so imagine that this is a, ge a geometric shape, right? That, that this alignment is going to remain even when we, when we move. And so I want you to turn both your hips and your shoulders as if they're on a plane, right? They're turning this way. You turn your shoulders and your hips, right? If you relax your shoulders and make your head top straight, just turning your hips like this. Keep your tailbone relaxed. Your hands will do their own thing. And then start to offset the shoulders. So grip your feet. Make your feet stuck to the ground. Your knees, by the way, are not wobbling this way. There may be a little bit of forwards and backwards as you as you like you're turning your tailbone in place vertically and then your shoulders and then keep your head straight. <clears throat> so this is this is the same kind of movement you see if you see a uh, a dog jump in the water when they jump when they come out of the water they shake. <clears throat> Next time you watch your your dog you can go onto YouTube too this is a bear when the bear goes into the water and comes out with a fish, they do the same thing. Do they start from the tailbone and start to shake going up? Or does it start from the head top and go down? Right? That's your homework assignment. So with that feeling in mind, that same kind of idea, let's go back to this one. Make your feet parallel. Grip your feet, relax your tailbone. And the same thing... <clears throat> If just the crown chakra is going upwards and everything else is going downwards, you should feel like you're, you're making some vertical progress. So as if you have a, like you have a towel or some type of thing and you just like to turn it around the center. 
So let your arms relax, but you're pulling up from the top. So let your shoulders relax, let your back relax, tailbone as well. And then come back to the center. How many feel it when we're doing this? You feel like this is uh, open, opening, right? <clears throat> we did some uh, turning around. The, let's do a little bit of bending at the waist. So activate your feet, push your tailbone back and away, and then expand your spine. Imagine that all of your vertebrae can open and the space between them is expanded, the cartilage. Especially remember to breathe when we're upside down. Balance the energy between your upper body and lower body by activating your feet. Pull your waist higher, closer to the ceiling. Fully release your neck and your shoulders. And then when you're ready, grip the ground. Use your abs, unroll, expanding. Inflating, the same thing that we did earlier, expanding all the way up. And then relax. <clears throat> We're gonna do that one again. So the same thing, make your feet parallel, shoulder width wide. Push your tailbone back and away, and then once you're folded, let everything relax. Let your head top point towards the ground. Release your neck. Release the upper back. Release the top of the shoulders. Your arms. Remember to breathe long, deep breathing through the nose. Keep the tongue connected to the upper palate. And feel the energy moving in your back with gravity. When you're ready, activate your feet, use your core, unroll your spine, breathing, expanding all the way, reach all the way up, and then <clears throat> relax. Uh, next, if you bring your, bring your uh, knees together, and then when we're doing this kind of, when we have standing in Tai Chi Harmony or any of the postures where the legs are together. Imagine like if you have a one light, like a flashlight, something, one power source, and you point it in one direction, and then you have another one, right? And maybe it's pointing off to the side in different, slightly different directions. They may assist in, in lighting up the other one. But if you turn them both and point them both at the same thing, the same with the legs, right? If we have an injury or deficiency, I heard one statistic that says three out of five people have at least a one half inch change between the two different legs if you measure your legs, right? So three out of five people have some difference. So this kind of putting them together uh, allows them to strengthen uh, themselves. While they're together, take your hands, generate the heat <clears throat> as if you're using old fashioned friction, and then press your palms against your kneecaps, <clears throat> and feel the energy go between your hands and your knees. And so breathing deep, even while we're standing like this, check your posture, relax your tailbone, push your neck up, relax your shoulders. <clears throat> and then change when you stand up, make sure it's correct again, and then do the same thing. So pressing. And then while we're here, you should learn what's happening inside of your kneecap. So with your hands, just press with Lao Gong, the point on the center going over top of the kneecap. You can feel with your fingertips the rest of the tendons around the outside of the knee. So grip your feet and feel what happens to your kneecap and then relax your feet. Completely relax your knees. You can stand without having the power in the toes. You can find a place of balance. And then activate the feet again. And then go across. Little toe, next toe. For each one, 
you should be able to feel some change inside your knee. So this is the way to fix knee injury, right? Uh, knee injury a, a lot of times is very mentally uh, frustrating because we feel like there's some limitation. But once we understand, just like in the forearm, if you wiggle your fingers, all the tendons inside the forearm uh, move and change. The same thing with your feet and the kneecap that way. Uh, let's do a little bit of stretching. So grip the ground with one foot, put the other foot forward, push your tailbone back and away. As much as you can, keep your spine straight. Remember to breathe when doing a qigong. Because it's warm, you can take longer breathing to cool yourself down using your built-in respiration. <clears throat> when you're ready, push up, step through it, and then on the other side, grip the ground, push your tailbone back and away. And then extending on your own. Remember to breathe. Use the breathing to generate power, use the breathing to cool the body, use the breathing to relax the mind. <clears throat> the Qigong is, is powerful. The Qigong is the real powerhouse of the Tai Chi. Push the tailbone back and away. Do the stretch. This is your workout, by the way, so stretch as much or as little as you like. Pain is one of the body's ways of saying stop, so as you start to approach a space that's painful, <clears throat> it means to make some kind of adjustment. On the other side, the same thing. Push your tailbone back and away. And then reach. And then <clears throat> on your own. By the way, we're going to use the same technique uh, coming up. Uh, I want people to start stretching a different, a different, their legs in a different way. And so we're going to use the same concept like we do here to stretch this way, except if I take this whole mechanism and turn from my hip, knee, and ankle here, bending this way, we can start to get into this kind of, we're going to get into a different kind of stretch um, so that we can practice very good postures for now. Uh, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's change also with this one. Pressing the gas pedal. But we're using more than just pressing the gas pedal. I learned this <clears throat> from a uh, Qigong teacher. And the concept is to press the Qi past the toes. So breathing. And then also we have another concept in mind. And it's like using the ankle as an energy pump. So we want to bring chi all the way to the end of the foot, past the end of the toes, and then change. Before you stand on that foot, <clears throat> let it relax for a second, go back into the best shape, and then grip the ground. You feel it's different. It has a different sensation. And then the same thing, work, <clears throat> break, or the clutch, use power. Remember the same breathing that we started with, like you're pushing energy past your toes, like swimming in the ocean with scuba gear on, and then change, come back. And then the same thing, when you go to set your foot down, you'll feel there's a different shape. So don't lose that shape. Let's do some on the other side, the same thing. It's pressing. So long breathing, as if you're kicking water past the toes, like you're making the chi go beyond the foot. And then change, before you step down on that foot, slowly allow it to keep its correct structure. Activate the toes, and then on the other side, the same thing. So see if you can find a slightly different way to resist. Use the arch on the bottom. Use the tendons on the top. 
almost like you're extending the hands and then like I'm using my fingers as an example. But do that <clears throat> with your toes. Become very articulate with the movement of your toes. And then before you place the foot down, very softly feel the placement, feel the shape of it. And then come back to the center. Bring your hands back to the center. Take a deep breath. And then calibrate from the top, head tops up. Chin is tucked, tongue is connected to the upper palate. Our vision, our eyes, our nose, and our mouth are expanded sideways so that it's relaxed. The back of the neck is upright. Shoulders, you can feel gravity in our central line moving upwards. Use the core. Relax the tailbone. And then feel your feet by using that technique that we did earlier. Even while you're standing, you can almost push against the ground. And then <clears throat> relax. Before we do some Tai Chi, uh, this is going to be a Tai Chi class, not a stick class. <clears throat> Does anyone have questions, thoughts, comments, ideas on something that you're working on? We're going to talk about uh, making power. Uh, two, two things, both the, the G, shocking power, the shortwave power today, and then we're also going to talk about a posture that is a transition where we turn 90 degrees uh, in, in form quite a bit. We turn from east to north and from north. To, to west using this uh, posture, horizontal split hands. So the first thing that we're going to do for, for the uh, uh, power exercise that we're talking about today is uh, just a little bit of X stepping. It's, it's warm where I'm at, so I don't want to work very hard. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to work not using a lot of power, but taking a lot of energy, taking a lot of oxygen in. So let's practice the balance. Uh, one teacher says balance is a byproduct of this, and uh, we can think of those in, in those terms where if we have the alignment correct, then the balance should be a natural byproduct of whatever we do. So, X stepping, starting from the center, activate your feet, and then when you step back, shoulder width wide, shoulder width deep, grip the ground, and then Bring your other foot, step parallel. And now when you step forward, shoulder width wide, shoulder width deep. Control the step. Grip the ground. Relax your tailbone. Bring the other foot with parallel step. Step forward. You can look at your feet. Make sure that they're lined up accurately, <clears throat> geometrically. Same thing. Control the step. Bring the other foot forward. Remember to breathe, returning back to the center. And then stepping forward to the left, grip the ground. Forward, stepping back. Make the feet lined up parallel. And then make the breathing. You see I'm keeping my hips in the same level the whole time. You can check here. If you have a mirror, it's, it's also easy to see. <clears throat> I would like it where you can develop that sort of sense on your own without needing to, to look. But in the beginning, we can use uh, different techniques to, to monitor. So this X-stepping technique <clears throat> is using the square shape. And so now we're going to do sort of a different, a different type of exercise. If we go from ward off to roll back to press, we're using the same square. So if I step forward and I ward off, and then I turn my feet 90 degrees here and here, and then I join my palms and I turn back to press in this direction. <clears throat> For those of you studying uh, the Bagua, the feet go into this kind of position where the knees are together, they go out and they're angled. This is using the same <clears throat> square step. So if I'm starting in the center and I step back to the corner and I turn this heel, just, just rotating on the heel of the foot, 
and turning. And now when I transition on this side, I'm turning here. By the way, when we turn the leg in this style of Tai Chi, this is one way, uh, if you can get thinking about your legs in this way, you can uh, remove a lot of uh, potential for injuries. This is, the leg is always moving from the hip, which means right here, when my leg moves, imagine <clears throat> the same way a weather vane is situated on a pivot. And the weather vane, the top of it, and whatever creature, sometimes they, they put a, a barnyard creature on top of there, and then they put an arrow so that you can see which way it's turning. Those are all pointing in the same direction based on the pivot. And so the same thing with our legs in all this Tai Chi form that we practice. They're, it's moving just like a weather vane, the hip, the knee, and the toe always pointing in the same direction. So when we transition, we don't have any uh, we don't want to have any flexion in the knee. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. If it if it's if it flexes, it should be up and down. It should never go left and right this way. It's a bad exaggeration because it's actually dangerous for the knee. So let's look at those two things. If we have the square step, where we step back, and then we raise the toe <clears throat> and turn it 90 degrees, and then raise the other toe and turn it 90 degrees, and then now on this side, if I'm using a square. I shift my weight back, I turn, I place the weight on that side, and then I can free this other foot. Let's turn, if I'm facing the camera this way, when I step back, I free the foot, I turn it 90 degrees, place it down, and then I shift weight to this side. Remember, we don't want to have the hip jutting out to the side. The hip should be directly over the foot. I free this side, and turn. So shifting back, free, turn, shift, free, and turn. This is kind of combining a few movements. <clears throat> and that's, in the beginning, we learned just standing. And then we learned parallel step with this kind of turning. And then we learned ward off, roll back, right? Which uses this type of turn. And the next one is the transition, is a transitional step, which is horizontal split hand. This is uh, mostly for the benefit of uh, Rad and anyone else that's, that's watching that doesn't know the, the opening, the beginning movements. So if, we're, if we review from the beginning, we'll review up to horizontal split hands, and then that's what we're going to do for the next uh, 20 minutes or so, which is look at that posture, that movement. So if I'm doing my Tai Chi, I'm going to start at kind of a unique angle so that we can see. And <clears throat> starting in Tai Chi Harmony, do the calibration internally, make your spine straight, sink your tailbone as if you're sitting down while you're standing up, fully stretch your back, grip your toes, we're opening shoulder width wide, breathing, expand, and then from here my square step, my center line, Grasp the sparrow's tail on the right side. I'm still facing forward. Square, step forward, control the step. Ward off, left. Breathing deep. This is grasp the sparrow's tail. Left, square step. Keep the hips level, control the step so you're not falling into it. Step forward, right. Ward off. Breathe deep, turning the feet 90 degrees. First the right foot, then the left foot. And then when I join my palms, I turn the left foot, shift back, then the right foot. Press forward. So here we stay in the square step, push. <clears throat> turn the spine left, turn right, double push. And the next movement, horizontal split hands, this is what we're going to look at, is this turning. So we're turning the square, we're turning the foot, and then we actually close by bringing the feet together in this posture. What is the, what is the, the meaning of it? <clears throat> let's, let's look at that in a minute. Before we continue, anyone have questions, thoughts, 
comments, ideas. Um, let's let's uh, actually, if we just stand here and I step back to the square, I step back shoulder width wide and I turn and then return. We're going to do this in, in four different directions. So if I'm facing west, I step square, I free the foot, turning from the hip 90 degrees to the south, and then from here, I'm just bringing my foot back to the basic. Stepping back, turn the foot, grip the foot, free the other side, and then allow it to return. Stepping back away, turn the foot, grip, facing the, every time, only turning 90 degrees. Stepping back, square, turn 90 degrees, release the foot, return the foot. Stepping back, turn, release. <clears throat> By the way, this at speed, this is something like this, right? Uh, so this, the, the, one of the nicknames for this is uh, rock step. So it's like a rocker, like like uh, a chair that has the the bottom of it is not flat, but it's rounded. So we can step back. This stepping back is the pivot through which we turn. And then this is where in Tai Chi, if we're practicing for the competition, uh, there may be people say, don't change the, the height. And it's one of the principles for the waist, we don't want to change the height. But there may be times for application when this is changing. So in horizontal split hands, uh, because of the application, if we're doing the form, we're practicing the part, we may not want to show that change in height. But if we're practicing for martial art, or we have some martial idea in mind, we actually can sink here, and then when we turn, once the once we are, uh, have control of the object, we can use the the recoil and the standing to help help benefit. <clears throat> so that's the footwork is the square step, just like we started with the square turning, and then we return to the small square, just like in the center of the X step. So we step back, turn, small square. Small square, large square, change direction, small square. This is in the Mandarin. Uh, it's got a funny, it's got a funny pronunciation. Hang Lieso, and the first word is a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's guttural or how you would refer to throaty. It's this Hang Lieso Hang, and this word is horizontal Hang, right? And then Lia is the term for splitting, like you're breaking something. You can think of pasta. Everyone here cooks a pasta, right? You break it, that split is lia, right? It's splitting. And then uh, the word so or so is my representation for the word hands. So this literally refers to horizontal splitting hands. And uh, by the way, this, this one is, uh, if those of you that saw the email that I had sent out that has the the trigrams on it, and there's a sort of a red square and like a blue diamond, and one says main directions and the other says corner directions. The reason this is important for this exercise is because this is a corner, this one is a corner exercise. So remember we had talked about using the square shape, and if I use this, my, uh, this carpet as a square, and I use the corner here, the power is traveling diagonally, right? So if I use this as my basis, and I have my square here, the line of action is coming diagonally. It's not power coming directly from the front this way. If it was, we would use a different movement. But, the, but in this posture, the idea is, if power is coming from my, my corner, if I step back, right, if my autofocus works, right, hopefully we can stay in focus here, is my square is here, so power is coming from the corner, so when I step back, I'm stepping directly away from the power that's coming, and then I want to form a buffer with my hands. We're going to review what happens with the hands. So this one is going to the corner. This is a corner exercise, as opposed to ward off 
if I ward off is going in the cardinal direction north. Before we continue, anyone have thoughts, questions, comments, ideas? Let's continue. So stepping, <clears throat> when we step back from the corner, this is one of the first things that we're doing when we step back with the hands. What's happening with the hands is they're turning. We can just think of this as making it a half circle, right? If your opponent is approaching, <clears throat> you can just think about turning a half circle. We're going to refine it quite a bit, but the most basic when I step back is like turning a wheel. Imagine your opponent's structure is just like a, a giant wagon wheel. And as they're coming at you, right, if they're coming this way, we can simply step back and turn their power, right, and assist them moving in, into that corner. <clears throat> but if we want to become more accurate about it, the first thing that we're doing is we have our hands up in front of ourselves like this. This is a defense, right? Remember when we talk about boxing, right, we want to use our, have the elbows ready to protect our, our structure here, right, like this kind of thing. So the hands are up. If I'm standing horizontal split hands, if you can see my feet, and my corner, I'm going to step to that corner. The first one is my hands come up just like this to protect myself. <clears throat> the reason is, if I put my hands out this way, my opponent knows that I'm going to catch, right? They can see that I'm preparing to catch their attack. But just like we had talked about, if you read The Art of War, it's about deception. So when the opponent comes, we pretend, oh no, I'm scared. I put my hands up this way. This way, they know we're going to catch. This way is a buffer to us. And only once we step back do we, do we start to turn to open that. So this is uh, part of the movement. Remember, Tai Chi, the principle, has, has three basic phases for every posture, for every movement. Avoid is the first one. So when we step back to that corner, when I'm in my square, I'm minding my own business, power comes diagonally from the corner here. And when I step back, I avoid. And the next one is to make contact. So I'm changing my posture. So I step back to avoid. I change to make contact. And then I'm going to turn my foot 90 degrees. And the last one is to advance. Right? So we have avoid, make contact, and advance. <clears throat> if I'm facing east and I turn to the north, when I step back, and again, remember, this the name for this is horizontal split hands. So some people like to interpret that literally as making the hands horizontal this way, and then when they turn, delivering power as such. <clears throat> the, the meaning for that, the reason for that, is if your opponent is attacking, right, let's see if I can get this, this thing to, to stay uh, where it's at. If your opponent is attacking this way, and they want to attack here, Horizontal split hands, if I have the backs of my hands here first and the power is coming towards me, imagine that this is moving in this direction. Is As I step back, I can connect and catch from underneath and then from here, turn this kind of turning. It's difficult to teach some of this stuff on a video camera. It's, uh, when, if we're in the park or in person, it's much easier to connect to somebody's wrist and you have to connect above the elbow because part of this is controlling the elbow with pressure. My teacher was, was uh, into joint locking and uh, I, I understand more about that now. So, so he was, the idea is if you control the arm when you turn, especially on the stand up, you have somebody's arm this way and if you stand up without any effort, you have full control of their arm. <clears throat> Another teacher says, it's not joint locking, it's joint breaking. So we have to be very careful with the opponent's, with the opponent's equipment. So from facing forward, if we step back, we can just think about making a circle. That's the most basic Tai Chi movement, is one hand draws one half of the Tai Chi symbol, the other hand falls behind with the other. The most accurate is when we step back, we avoid and then the left hand connects on top of the wrist. The right hand connects under the elbow, back here. And then as the power is advancing, we turn to go under and allow it to continue in the diagonal direction, returning back to our normal posture. 
So, <clears throat> horizontal split hands, avoid make contact, advance. And this, by the way, this turning is, uh, this, this happening quite a bit when we go from facing south to east, and then we might turn around here and do something, but uh, this is most of the 90 degree transitions. Uh, sometimes we have hook and corner whip, right? I just saw somebody putting that on camera. That's, a, that's also a 90 degree transition. So let's do the first section again up to horizontal split hands. So if we start from Tai Chi Harmony, again, I'm gonna face the corner to start calibrate. Bring the highest point up and sink the lowest point down. Breathe deep, relax your shoulders, grip your feet. Opening shoulder width wide, Send power all the way out to the fingertips. And then expand in internal pressure, internal breathing, internal expansion for, gra uh, for ready stance. Grasp the sparrow's tail and ward off. And then breathing, grasp the sparrow's tail, ward off. Roll back. Join the palms, press, push, look left, glance right, double press. Here's what we had just talked about, split. Let me do that from another angle, if I'm facing forward, right? And we'll just go straight to commencement, straight to ready stance. And so I grasp the sparrow's tail. Ward off. Keep your spine straight. Relax your tailbone as if you're sitting the whole time. Ward off. Roll back. I turn 90. Join the palms. Press. I turn 90. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal split hands. This is what we just talked about. Cover, turn, 90. And the next one, hook, single whip. <clears throat> By the way, we can think of this in terms of, of uh, trigrams with power. If we go back to go back to to this one, these kind of uh, things. Wait, does it go this way? Or does it go this way? Are they the same? The idea is, let's look at this one, right, is the feet are moving and the upper part is locked. So, and by the way, this is where, when we start to analyze these trigrams, once we get to the last, uh, the last ones, they start to become, see this, if we, imagine we did horizontal split hands like this, just the feet are moving. So imagine that I'm with my upper body supporting something. Right? We said this one can be likened to somebody throws a, a carpet off the back of a moving truck. And so I can just move my feet and my upper body stays locked like the upper two. And so I step back and turn this way. Or this is where we get into sort of splitting the, splitting the difference, right? We had just said that was this one. So my feet are moving, but my waist and my shoulders once I hold the thing, my feet can move, but my torso is locked. If I, maybe I grab my opponent, right, we're wrestling. If I grab their torso, I use my hip and my shoulder locked as one piece, right? That's what this one looks like. My hip and my shoulder are one piece, and my feet underneath can move. So I can secure myself to my opponent, and then by turning like a, like a drum, this upper part, my feet underneath, it looks almost like this one, where if my feet and my waist are turning, but my shoulders are locked, right? This, once we get into this, we're at the, we're at the end and it starts to get into splitting hairs. So the difference is, one is like if I pick up the yoga ball, if I grab my opponent or whatever the object is that I want to move, and I lock my waist and my shoulders to turn, as opposed to if something is higher and I, it's more like a bar or a beam, and as 
realize that bar or beam is coming this way. My waist and my feet can turn, but my shoulders are locked, right? So this is, uh, we're gonna get into more of explanation of, of these things, these different, different, uh, different, different cards. By the way, we had said there's a, there's eight of them. So we'll go into what all those are later. Before we continue, questions, thoughts, comments, horizontal split hands. I'm sorry if this is a boring review for people who know this posture. Uh, I try to keep it informative even for, for experienced people. So <clears throat> horizontal split hands. By the way, this is also, you can think of this, uh, the most basic is just like a, <clears throat> like a standing where we turn the geometry 90 degrees to the side and return to normal. But you can also think of this, remember we said cultivating the Tai Chi form is like learning to write your characters perfectly, right? When you use the paper and it has lines and you first learn whatever characters, whatever language you're learning, you learn to write it perfectly. And then when you go to use it, when you're out in public and people see you and they recognize you and they say, can I get your autograph? You just scribble it very quickly and hand it to them, right? Uh, you don't have to think about making a, a perfect A and a perfect B and all that other stuff. The same thing when we do horizontal split hands is here. And we can analyze thinking about connecting to different parts and turning this way. But when we're using the posture, it may not come out that way, right? And this, by the way, this is is the basis for in the martial arts for judo flip. If the opponent is attacking, if they have especially an overhead or something that's coming down it, it we said it's a diagonal, it's coming at an angle. If it's coming directly this way, I may use a different kind of deflect to move it. But if it's coming downwards or ang angular this way, I can connect to it, use my structure like the workhorse and pivot to throw that weight over my shoulder. Like I have, like, like if there's a heavy weight, I'm trying to think of something that I can use. Where uh, you have a sack of potatoes or a sack of concrete, and it's there, right? And from here, it's already up here. We want to take it and throw it and control where it lands. So without having to use some kind of muscular force, instead we put this, this structure, right? We have this, this strong structure with the center line. And we use that like a crane or like a pivot point, like a workhorse that has a beam upon which you can put something much, much heavier and, and pivot it to one side without uh, affecting the structure, right? This is, this is what we're looking for with the horizontal splits. Questions, thoughts, comments, ideas. Again, if you like to practice something where you're hiding crouching tiger, hidden dragon, you like to hide the form, you can just step back and wave your hands in the air, and that's all good. And that may work as a martial arts technique. If your timing is correct and your opponent is uh, not, not that correct, you may just simply be able to turn the wheel, right? Turn their structure as they're coming forward uh, to, to the side. That may work. Uh, in other cases, you may have to turn their wrist by, by pull, flipping the wrist this way, and then suspend the elbow here. And then if you stand up when you have that posture, the other person is under control locking technique. We'll get more into it later. Let's do just a little bit more Tai Chi. Same thing from the beginning. I'm gonna face uh, this way, and we'll see where, the, see where the turn is. So return to Tai Chi harmony, bring your feet together, hands together. Take a deep breath. And like a, sci like a science fiction movie where they have the special effects, go from the top to the bottom, scanning. Pull the head top up, relax your brow, open your vision, open your nostrils sideways, connect the tongue, activate the corners of the mouth, half smile is minimum. Jaw is relaxed, ears lined up with the shoulders, shoulders roll back and relax, chest is hollow, center is supporting. Your Posture should be as relaxed as you're breathing, lifting the bottom on the inside, relaxing the tailbone and expanding. Tailbone is hiding, right? Which means just like, almost like sitting, like, like when you're not even sure where the edge of the bench is and, and you're 
your butt starts to, to like sort of reach back there for it. The same thing, like gravity is just doing its work. <clears throat> the knees have a bend in them and the insides of the hips are folding in. Activate your feet, your ankles, your toes, and send power past yourself into the ground, rooting yourself. The more power that goes down, make the top part lighter. Breathe to expand. We're going to step shoulder width wide. Power past the fingertips. Allow everything to settle. Keep your spine straight. Check to see that you have a very serious expression. Grasp the sparrow's tail. The same thing, check your feet. Place them soft and make sure they keep the strong shape when you ward off. Long breathing, especially if you're warm, grasp the sparrow's tail. Square step forward, control the step, ward off. Long breathing again. Make everything as mathematically accurate as possible. There's time later, there's always time later to make it more fluffy, more flowery, more flowy, if you'd like to do that. Schwung on. Look left. Glance right. This one is actually double push. And then from here, horizontal split hands. Step back, turn 90. Send to the corner. And then the next one, the momentum continues. Right? So after I do the split to get into hook and whip, <clears throat> we could do this like a connect the dots where it's a, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? But we can also, once I send the power in that direction, my hand recoiling, right? So after I send it, it's going to come back up and do its thing. <clears throat> Questions, thoughts, ideas? I think that's time. Let's actually do a little bit about breathing to close. So. Make your feet shoulder width wide. We're going to put the hands <clears throat> on the side here. And imagine you have some weight, like you're carrying something heavy, cannonball, right? Some kind of metal. And reaching, keep your back and neck straight, turning, press through the center. Take your time. If you know this one, go at your own pace. If you don't, <clears throat> we'll review slow. So scooping forward, the palm is skyward the whole time. This palm is facing up the whole time. And then on the other side, reaching forward, we make one big loop. And then a second loop that comes down behind and back. Watch my torso, right, well I guess it depends, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Continuously turning, keep your spine straight, just like we had, keep working, keep breathing, but like we did earlier, like the dog, shaking, right, shaking is, is a funny one, right? If, you're, if you have pain in, in your shoulders, you can make this one much smaller, right, for people that have an injury or you feel some, some type of pain. But if you can, make it a stretch, make it a yoga, reach all the way out, and incorporate it with the waist turn. In Tai Chi, there is a waist turn in every posture. So another Tai Chi principle that's difficult to teach as a, as a static thing, as a movement. And so what this means is, for every posture, we have this kind of waist turning. And this is internally, this is a good exercise for the liver, for the spleen. Different organs produce different chemicals by massaging against each other. Same thing with the kidneys. So uh, whatever we didn't make up for in our Tai Chi practice with the waist turning, we can do this as well. <clears throat> Wherever you're at, balance it out. Do the same number on either side if you start it right. End with the left one. We're past the time, so if you're on a schedule, it's time to go back. Otherwise, bring your feet together, bring your hands together. Move your mind into the center. 
take a second to look at yourself and then internally smile into yourself at least a half smile, right? It's easy sometimes not to like ourselves, but uh, when we have this practice, we have to have at least a half smile for ourselves. Same kind of long breathing that we started with. And then internally, take a second to refine your gratitude practice for yourself to yourself. Starting with yourself. Love yourself first, and then it will expand outward into the world. One long, last deep breath. Smiling internally to yourself. That's it. All right, email questions. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Have a good night.